Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Mauser here. Quick one today, we're looking at down and synthetic jackets. These are ones that I've owned and I've used over the last five years here in Tasmania on those wet and cold hikes. So we're gonna look at these different jackets that I have owned. I've owned them all over the last and tested them all. Some are a bit newer than others, but I just wanna run through. I've got all these jackets. I've got a bit of a jacket problem, I guess. I've got all these jackets. I've used them all extensively and I wanted to run through them and hopefully save you the time of buying different jackets and just settling on one at the end of this video. By the end of this video, I want to tell you what, in my opinion, is the best all-round jacket for hiking, for taking on those treks, and for just wearing around town. So let's get into it. First up, have a quick rundown of the difference between down and synthetic jackets. Down is, hopefully we all know what that is, but that's those little feathery, it's the feathers, feathers, the fluffy feathers. In terms of warmth to weight ratio, down has always considered to be better. It's light, it's fluffy, and it, it expands well, can pack down well, pretty good. Synthetic is catching up. There are some really good synthetic materials out there now. We'll talk about them a little. Down also is changing. It has some hydrophobic treatments happening with it. For example, my sleeping bags I use now have got hydrophobic treatments. So even if the down gets a bit wet, whereas traditionally it would not work as well, it is becoming more efficient with those hydrophobic treatments that help repel water and help it maintain its fluffiness. So what do I use? Well, around town, I wear down. Yep, so when I'm in town, I tend to put on my puffy down jacket. I know it's gonna stay dry. It doesn't matter if it gets wet because I'm going straight home, but just when I'm out and about in the city, I'll wear my down jacket. I have taken them on hikes these days. I tend to stick with the synthetic jackets that I have, as well as a nice fleece like I've got on here. And the other point, these aren't cheap jackets. There are cheap options. The ones I've got, I've researched and I've paid a bit extra to get a really high quality jacket. If I was starting out again, which back in the day when I was starting out, I just had a fleece like this good old Patagonia R1 jacket, that awesome fleece with some thermals. I'd have to carry a bit of extra weight. These days I've got the luxury where I've been been able to afford some better equipment. I've been in the game for 25 plus years and I've uh, invested in my equipment. Yep, so I tend to stick with synthetic jackets for all of my hikes now, unless it's in summer where I'm going to be nice and dry the whole time. We're going to go into the jackets now. So when I'm looking at a new jacket, three main things I take into consideration. The warmth, the weight, it's weather performance. Now generally synthetic is going to be better in the wet weather. That's just a fact of life. But down is getting better. I realise that I'm a bit of a synthetic boy these days. Other things I will think about does it have a hood? I like to have a hood, especially in these wild Tasmanian conditions. Does it have a full zip? I can control the airflow into the jacket with that, especially if I have it on while I'm hiking. And does it have hem adjusters? They're those little drawstrings around the waist that you can tighten off the jacket with. I think they are crucial. Do they just stop those drafts getting up in those windy cold days? I really think they're important. So they're the sort of things I will consider when I am looking at a new jacket. So let's get into it. First jacket off the rank. The Patagonia Nano Air. This was the first non sort of down synthetic jacket I had. It was what I purchased. I used to always pack fleece and I thought I'd try a synthetic one that wasn't down quite a few years ago. Patagonia, I love the brand. I love everything. Like, you I'm a Patagonia boy too. But I bought this one thinking this is sort of the way I wanted to go. I had it ever since, had this six years, I guess. And yeah, it's a great jacket. I've just found that when I'm out on hikes and it's windy and cold, it has it just lets the wind through. Admittedly, when you read the Patagonia website, it was made to be worn for the entirety of your aerobic start-stop alpine missions. So it, it was kind of made to be active in. It was meant to let that air flow through. So I probably should have done my research a bit more for this one. I think it's a great jacket still. It's just not one I tend to take on hikes now, maybe on a day walk, but I wear it around town a lot. I wear it uh, when I'm traveling. It's a great jacket for traveling. It just packs down to nothing. It's just a good option when I am on a plane going away for a night or two. Just a good lightweight jacket to wear and I certainly rate it. Yeah, so I've had the Nano Air since 2016, 2017. It weighs 346 grams and it's still available, not so much in Australia. It's a bit hard to find. In America, it is available in the USA and it's about 300 to 430 Australian dollars, depending on where you find it. Links down below. It's not a bad jacket. Great if you're running or if you're going for quick missions. Some people would love it. Just for me, I'm a bit of a cold boy and I prefer something a bit warmer that's gonna sort of keep temperature in. That's the Patagonia Nano Air. Next up, the Arcteryx Atom LT Footy. This thing was my first foray into the world of Arcteryx. Back in around 2018, I bit the bullet and put a lot of money into this jacket. It was my first foray into Arcteryx and I've had it for five years now and I wear it most weeks still. I wear it around town, I wear it when I'm hiking. It is my go-to sort of lightweight summer jacket, probably more so than the Nanowear hoodie and I love it. This and the Nanowear, they've both got, they're very similar. I just find this a bit more wind resistant. They've both got two 
two pockets there. They've both got an internal pocket in the chest. They've both got the drawstrings on the hems as well as on the hood. Uh, and they're a great sort of jacket. Yeah, this one has the DWR coating, the durable water repellent finish. So it's sort of, I think the newer Nano Airs have that too. But this one, I just find it's still resistant even after sort of five years. It's still going strong. Yep, so both this, the Arcteryx Atom LT and the Patagonia Nano Air are both synthetic jackets. So what is great with these is even in, when they're wet, when I get a bit damp out on the track, I can have this on under my raincoat, under my shell and still be nice and warm. It doesn't become ineffective. It still warms me. And I've had that on my Southern Ranges trip a few years ago when it poured and rained all day. It was awful. I had this and a fleece on under my shell and I was able to maintain the warmth that day. And I am so glad that I had this jacket because without it, it would have been pretty touch and go. It was a big day. Hopefully I'm showing some footage on the screen of that right now. That was a rough day. And this jacket, I thank it very much for protecting me that day. That's for sure. And keeping me warm. I find the quality of Arcteric stuff top notch. My outer shell, my rain jacket, the BDRAR is going strong years and years later. I think it's worth the investment if you can afford it. There are other options out there that are cheaper and we'll look at them at some stage. But today, we're just looking at the ones that I've used and the ones I like. If you want an investment in a lightweight coat, this is a good one. It is 375 grams, which is 13.2 ounces. Yeah, so it's 400 Australian dollars or 260 US roughly at the time of making this video. Expensive, but that's Arcteryx, that's sort of their price point. They are the expensive brand, but gee whiz, I think they are durable, high quality. I've heard reports of people having troubles with some of the products, but I've never had a trouble. Where I have had the odd bit of damage to gear, I've been able to send it back to the local distributor and they've repaired it for me, so which is great. Next up, we're gonna continue the Arcteryx theme, the Arcteryx Cerium LT hoodie. Now, this jacket is down. It was a massive deal for me when I bought it. It was a big outlay. I needed, I just, like I said, I'm a down around town sort of guy, but this was an expensive one. I rarely buy a down jacket. And for this one, I wanted to stick with Arcteryx. I'd had such a good time in my Adam LT hoodie that I stuck with the brand of Arcteryx. And these Cerium jackets are extremely light. They are 335 grams for a down jacket that I consider pretty good for pretty much any time of year, even the middle of winter here. And that's for those in the Imperial world of things, that is 11.8 ounces, but they are not cheap. <laughs> they are not cheap at all. So when you're buying one of these at the moment, the Arcteryx Cerium LT hoodie is listed on the Arcteryx website at $580 Australian dollars. That's 300 US dollars. It's too much for a down jacket, but they are extremely light. This has been very durable. I even, I managed to put a couple of holes in it. I have managed to break the zip on it. I'm rough on my gear. My friends know that, but I sent it back to the local distributor. They replaced the zip. I think I just paid postage from memory. Put a better zip on there. One thing with any of these jackets is you need to be careful of the delicate nature of the, the outer fabric. If you're around a campfire or something, there is the risk of embers blowing up in the air and then they land on the jacket. You don't realize and before you look, you've got a little hole in there in the jacket, which I have just covered with a bit of tenacious tape and it's fine. But that's just something to be aware of. The jacket itself, it's filled with an 850 power fill down, which means it's quite lofty. So you don't need as much down because it lofts up really well, which gives it the lightweight nature of the jacket. The thing with Arcteryx as well, they've got ethical down. They source it from all the ethical correct places. You can even look at the name of the factory of where this jacket was made on their website. It's nice to know. I still love this jacket. I wear it all the time during winter, during summer. Yeah, that is the Arcteryx Cerium LT. I'm gonna be wearing this for a long time, for many, many years to come. So yeah, again, it has two pockets, which I like. It has the internal pocket there. It has the hem drawstrings. This one has a hood rear attachment just to tighten in around the head there which is good as well but they are all requirements that I really like to see in a jacket the Cerium LT great jacket I'll continue to use it for quite a while yet Next up, we've got the Patagonia Micro Puff Jacket. Now this is a unique sort of filling in these jackets. It's synthetic, but it kind of looks like a down. The Patagonia had their Nano Puff, then they've developed the Micro Puff. You've got this jacket, which it doesn't feel like other synthetic jackets, in that it feels kind of like a down jacket, which is pretty cool. Yet it acts like a synthetic fabric. So it doesn't really matter when it gets damp because it's got this um, synthetic sort of puffy fabric filling inside it. It's got what Patagonia call the Pertex Quantum Shape. 
shell on the outside with Plumafil insulation. Plumafil. Plumafil. It's a good word, isn't it? And they say it is the best warmth to weight ratio jacket they have produced. And I would have to agree that this is definitely something I would prefer over the Patagonia Nano Air. Absolutely. I've used this quite a bit out on the track. As I said, it's from my guiding company that I had. And we use this as our jacket for the guides. And it's a good overall jacket. I, one of the only reasons I haven't worn it too much on my longer trips is it doesn't have a drawstring on the hem. That's a bit of a deal breaker for me. I didn't get this with a hood. You can get a hoodie. I wanted a jacket without a hoodie since I already had a few hoodies, obviously. But yeah, it's just lacking those drawstrings and I miss them. You really, when it's windy outside, you can, it just makes a difference having drawstrings. This is quite loose around my waist, but still got the two pockets. It's got the internal sort of dump pockets, these big things here, where you can just stuff down them. Doesn't have a zippered internal pocket, but it's still a good jacket. Look, I like it. I'm, I do wear this a bit still too. I'm never gonna speak lowly of Patagonia gear. It's high quality. This will last for years. Good thing I've got four kids because they can all inherit all these jackets that we're currently reviewing. So yeah, the Patagonia Micro Puff. This is without the hood, so it's a bit lighter. It's 298 grams. That's about 10.5 ounces. It retails here in Australia for $250. On the US website, it's about 279 $9. Brings us to the Arcteryx Atomayar hoodie. This is my go-to winter jacket. I bought this after a trip where I had the Atom LT, that trip in the Southern Ranges where it got crazy. I bought this after that thing. If I go on a winter trip like that in the snow, I'm gonna need something a bit warmer. So but yeah, I bought this because the Atom LT was the lighter version of this. Obviously, this is the Atom AR. LT means lightweight, AR means all around. So this is a much thicker, it's really noticeable, the thickness of it. Basically the same deal. It's got the two pockets still, it's got the internal zipper pocket. It's got the drawstrings for the hoodie, both here on the sides there, as well as on the back. It's got all that, and it's got that water resistance on the outer shell. This this one, for obvious reasons, is heavier. It's 475 grams, 16.76 ounces, 475 grams, and retails in Australia for, yeah, it's ugly. It's 450 Australian dollars, or it's about 300 US dollars. It's an expensive jacket again. It, these Arcteryx products aren't cheap, but what I tend to do when I'm looking at getting an Arcteryx product is I wait till normally the Boxing Day sales after Christmas and they normally have 20% off or sometimes even 30% off and I wait for them and I do my Arcteryx shopping on Boxing Day. They have other sales throughout the year but generally on Boxing Day you can get pretty much 20% off most of the stuff on the entire store. Another place in Tasmania here that I often shop at would be Find Your Feet and oh yeah, they've regularly got 20% off store wide and you can pick up Arcteryx stuff 20% off so that's a good deal. So yeah, it's not a cheap jacket but it's certainly certainly fulfilled the need that I bought it for, which is give me that extra level of warmth on those really cold trips. It is, like I'm getting, I'm sweating in this right now. It is really hot in this thing. And I just take it, I've often thrown in at the last minute in place of my Adam LT, just sort of think when I'm looking at the weather and I'm about to head off, I've thought I'm gonna need a bit of extra warmth. I will chuck this in instead of an extra layer. And it's just a good jacket. And again, it's got all those sort of same properties as the other synthetic jackets. And yeah, I really like it. It's good. It will continue to come on those winter trips with me, something that I do even wear around town still on those days where it's a bit drizzly and rainy and I don't want to bring out that Cerium SL down jacket. If I know I'm going to get pretty wet, I'll chuck this on instead in winter. So then I don't have to put my raincoat on and I can duck, I can run between the car, you know, and do my errands in the rain with this on and know I'm going to stay warm. So that is the Arcteryx Atom AR. Great hoodie, expensive, but like I said, I am paying for longevity. I'm paying for quality with this stuff. I don't like just throwing something out after a year. All this stuff lives in my wardrobe it all gets used regularly and I just like having the different options. One thing I did find when I've been looking online lately, I can't see this available currently. Arcteryx in Australia tends to have sort of stock issues and they come and go. It's available in the US, just not in Australia currently that I can see. Now, I've had this for a few years, uh, probably three or four years and it's a great jacket, still love it. Arcteryx Atom AR. Next up. The Arcteryx Nuclei FL jacket. This is probably my favorite to date. It is pretty much brand new. Got this one in January for my big walk that I just did. I was looking to shed some weight. I wanted something a bit lighter and not quite as heavy as the Atom AR, but I didn't want to take the Atom LT. That just wasn't quite warm enough. I wanted an in-between sort of jacket and I found this thing and it got it on special, which was even better. When I was looking at this, it was designed as a climbing jacket for rock climbing. So you can belay and stuff in it, can work with a harness 
And I thought, well, I don't, I don't climb these days. But when I went and tried it on and had a look at it, I thought this is a very warm jacket. I started sweating bullets in the store, not only over the price, but also over this, the warmth of this jacket. And it was 30% off and I said, I've got to do it. So the main reason for me switching to this for that walk was the weight was 325 grams. That's 325 grams or 11.46 ounces. Yeah, that weight saving with the Atom AR and this, it was a no brainer for me. It's also got, I think it's more of a water resistant sort of shell on it as well. So when I used it on this recent walk, it rained a bit and I'd have this on and it wasn't a problem. It just sort of ran off um, and it was very warm. They've got this outer layer on it called the Arato 10D Ripstop fabric, which is windproof and durable. And it's got this thing they've called the Storm Hood, very original, but the Storm Hood, which also has the drawstring on the back and it doesn't have them on the front, but it zips up like you can see in a way that you get that nice seal around there. So that's nice. It's also got the two pockets. It's got no internal zip pocket, but it does have the dump pockets. I think they call these dump pockets, these things. Uh, and that comes with the little stuff sack as well to pack it up into itself, which is handy. So yeah, that is the Nuclei FL. FL means fast and light, you know, when you want to be on the move, good jacket. It is, again, it seemed to like the $400 price point Arcteryx. It's 400 Australian dollars or around 300 US dollars. But like I said, you can get these things on special. I got this 30% off, which was a huge saving when I bought it. And it, the only thing I would say with this jacket is that it feels a bit delicate. I know it's got the ripstop external stuff, but I feel on some of these rough granity and dolerite type rocks here in Tasmania, as opposed to those Atom series jackets, this sort of fabric, this more of a plasticky sort of feel, I guess. It's not plastic, but you know what I mean. It feels a bit more delicate. The same with the, the Patagonia Micro Puff jacket. That's got the same sort of feel. If you scrape this up against dolerite or something here in the mountains, it feels like it would tear. I haven't had that trouble yet, but just saying. Whereas the other jackets feel a bit sturdier. They've all got the ripstop component to it. This just feels a bit more delicate. And one thing I should quickly point out is that the, the Nuclei FL and the Cerium LT both come with stuff pockets, the rest don't. So they've got integrated stuff pockets, which you can put the jacket into and when you're hot, and that's handy. It's another good feature back to it. So that's the rundown of, of my jackets that I've got currently. There are a couple of honorable mentions though. I did have a Mountain Designs Ghost Whisperer at some stage. Didn't mind it. It was very lightweight. It was a good jacket. My mate Walter still has one. He still wears that, but I just found it a little too thin not warm enough for me. People swear by them, but I sold that online. Wasn't using enough and didn't like the feel of it. And that's the great thing about, if you look after these things, they're pretty easy to sell online on Facebook and places like that. And also another honorable mention to my fleece jackets. These things, these fleeces that I wear, and I'll do a review on them at some stage because I'm always, I've always got a fleece on, often in winter, have it on under one of these. They're such a good option. If you don't want to go and spend a heap of money on down or synthetic jackets, get a good fleece, a lot cheaper. And you can buy a fleece just about anywhere these days. Yeah, so on Honorable mention to the fleece. Honorable mention to the mountain hardware ghost whisperer. But I know you're all thinking, no, that's nice, man. You got all these jackets. That's fantastic. I don't want to get six jackets. I want to get one jacket that's going to do the job. I've tested all of these over the years. They've all been on walks with me. They've all been on hikes. They've all been in some pretty crazy conditions. And if I could just pick one, what would I take? Now, when I say pick one, I'm talking three season. I'm not going to, winter is a different kettle of fish in the middle of the snow and stuff. The Adam AR would probably do the trick, or, but I'm going to pick one jacket for three season purposes because I'm not a huge fan of winter hiking. But if you said to me, look, you've got to pick one jacket that you take on every hike, I would have to say this one, the Nuclei FL, the Arcteryx, the latest and the greatest. I really like this jacket. I love it so much, I'm just not even going to wear it around town because I want it to just be preserved for purely for hiking, purely for walking, so it stays in good condition. And I'll pretty much take it, I think, on every hike because I just think about in that last walk I did, I would sit around and I'd be sweating in this thing on a cold day. So it certainly feels like the warmest jacket out of all of them, even compared to the Adam AR, which feels a lot thicker, this just feels warmer. So that's what I would do. I'd probably go for the Arcteryx Nuclei FL Fast and Light Jacket as my one jacket that I would pick if I had to pick any. If I had to buy one, I would pick this and I'd probably wait online for a sale for one to come up and get it at 20, 30% off. That's not what you have to do, but that's just what I would do. I'm the only person I know that has this jacket, but I'm loving it. It's great. That is my sort of sum up of the jackets. The Nuclei, I think, offers the best option. If you wear, take that and 
conjunction with a thermal base layer and a fleece mid layer, which is what I tend to do, then it is definitely the way to go. Until next time, it's been great to have you here. If you've made it this far, then thank you, appreciate it. I'm loving like the new subscribers, we're getting a few comments, and it's just great to see a bit of interaction here in this little community called YouTube. If you've got any comments, leave them down below, right there. In the meantime, if you wanna watch some more of my content, check out this video right there, which is where I go through my glove system that I use for hiking and how it's developed over the years. Check that one out, hit the like, hit the subscribe, but I'd love to see you here for the next one. Until then, see you later.